You probably have heard many times that EEG is the summation of excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. So in this tutorial, I will give you a quick review about postsynaptic potentials, how are those generated, and how do those lead to the EEG waves. This is an absolutely essential topic, and I strongly recommend you follow along until the very end of this tutorial, you will gain some very useful concepts. EEG will definitely make much more sense once you have mastered these concepts. So let's get started. So what is a neuron? So neurons are the building blocks of the nervous system. This is what a neuron looks like. This part of the neuron is called the nucleus here. This is the axon and then you can see the axon terminal. The human brain is made up of approximately 60 billion neurons. In a resting state, the inside of the neuron is relatively more negative than the outside. And this is an important concept to realize. Neurons communicate with each other through electrochemical signals. And so if you can think about it, uh, let's have a look over here. Let's move on. So if you think about it, this is a synapse. This over here, this is a presynaptic terminal or a presynaptic neuron. This here is a postsynaptic neuron. The presynaptic neuron releases neurotransmitters and it can create potentials on the postsynaptic neurons. In this case, it's an excitatory signaling that leads to an increase in positive charges inside the postsynaptic neurons. This is called an excitatory postsynaptic potential. So basically, let's quickly review it. The junction between two neurons is called a synapse. The neuron that brings the message is called the presynaptic neuron, that is this one. The neuron that receives the message is called the postsynaptic neuron. If the presynaptic neuron causes the postsynaptic neuron to become more positive from the inside, as in this case, we call it an excitatory postsynaptic potential or EPSP. If the presynaptic terminal, so let's move on to the next slide here. So here we see a neurotransmitter that causes the postsynaptic neuron to become more negative. So if the presynaptic neuron causes the postsynaptic neuron to become more negative from the inside, as in this case, we call it an inhibitory postsynaptic potential or IPSP. Now, some very important concepts. So let's move on to the next slide here. So let's imagine that this is the surface of the scalp here. Uh, there are certain kinds of neurons called pyramidal neurons, which are arranged perpendicular to the cortical surface with the apical dendrites closer to the cortical surface. So let's make some drawing here. So let's say that this is a pyramidal neuron and we have the apical dendrite closest to the scalp. So this is a, a neuron. And then you can imagine millions and billions of neurons that are arranged this way. Okay, so this is a neuron. When there is an excitatory postsynaptic potential, as we've previously discussed, there is a net increased positivity on the inside of the cell, as you see here. Now, when there is intracellular, so inside the cell means intracellular, when there is an increase in intracellular positivity, there is a relative increase in negativity on the outside of the cell here. So this is the extracellular space. Now what happens next is very interesting that relative to this negativity, this end becomes relatively more positive. So there is charge, positive charge on this end, negative charge on this end, which is separated by distance. So if you recall, charge separated by distance is called a dipole. And so the current starts flowing 
from the positive end to the negative end. So this is the flow of current from positive end to the negative end. And then you can imagine same thing happening over here. I've not drawn all the charges here, but same thing will happen here. The current, so with excitatory postsynaptic potentials, there is increased positivity in the intracellular space, leading to a relatively increased negativity on the outside of the cell, and the opposite side is relatively more positive, and the current starts flowing from positive end to the negative end. Now, what happens if there is an inhibitory postsynaptic potential? So let's try to quickly draw that as well. So there will be net negative charges on the inside. And when there are net negative charges on the inside, there will be relatively more positivity on the outside. And the opposite end of this neuron will be relatively more negative. So there will be relatively more negative negativity over here. And then as you can well imagine, current starts flowing in the opposite direction here. And same thing happens from this side, that the current starts flowing to the opposite direction. And there is a constant excitation and inhibition of these neurons leading to changes in the potentials on this end and changes on potentials on this end. And this is what generates the EEG. So you can see there is changing in the excitatory and inhibitory uh, postsynaptic potentials outside the neurons because of the stimulation from an excitatory neuron or an inhibitory neuron and when you place electrodes on the scalp and record the potential difference it is actually the summation of the excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials that you're measuring there so i hope this makes sense to you and as you can see here, EEG is generated by the summation of these excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials and their constant change in the extracellular space. Thank you for your attention. And I hope that this concept about EPSPs and IPSPs makes much more sense to you.